Welcome again to Word Vibes. Uh, we're looking at perspectives. Uh, this Today we're looking at His Seek, God's Seek. Um, you know, that's, that's an interesting topic. His Seek. His Seek. That means God is faithful to put His Seek in us. Uh, with me today on the program, as usual, is my wife, Donnet Norman. And we are really excited about this topic because this is really, really where it's at with God and with you today, why you are alive in this time. Amen. Yes, God is faithful. You see, um, He hasn't left us up to chance. He is actively and intimately involved in the affairs of humans' life. And, and by experience, even, even looking at my own life, I, there's a song I used to sing growing up, He was there all the time. God has been faithfully working in our lives, and He is the one who has put His seek in us. And as we explore this today, I'm, I'm sure that what the Holy Spirit is going to be doing is just opening your eyes to see the many times when God has stretched out His arms of love to you, and even now, this program is mm -hmm. His hands extended to you. Amen. So, let's go. And I'm, I, we're coming to you from our transcript, Word Vibes, Bread for the Nations, and which you can check out on our Facebook page. The information will be given later. But we all have a, time, a set time to seek the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? He lives in eternity. Eternity has no beginning and it has no end he lives in eternity but he created time mm -hmm. to manifest his purpose mm -hmm. yes. to cause us to choose him in time and to live out that which he purposed from before the foundations of the earth mm -hmm. so we all have a set time and during that time he is going to put his desire to seek or as we will see in the scripture that the main text that we will be using to feel after him mm -hmm. it is that desire to know God what is his seek it's that desire to know God as your eternal father in an intimate way mm -hmm. and to discover the purpose for which you were created mm -hmm. that is the the, the, the the seek we're talking about coming from the perspective of God who lives in eternity who sees our past present and future oh, and so to, to yeah. and so his time to seek or to see his time that he has created for us to seek him is always now right. while there is time on our account right. and I want you to speak a little bit to the dash in your life that uh, we heard from a, a speaker at one of our conferences some time ago so your time is the time that God has given to you to seek him right. so your life all of the circumstances surrounding your life was specially orchestrated so that you could, as the scripture says, feel after God and find Him, though He be not far from any of us. So God has, where you are born is designed by God to cause you to find Him in the shortest time. Let's, let's, let's look at that scripture. Right. In Acts chapter 17, there's a situation where Paul was waiting on some of the other saints um, to come um, and, and to accompany them somewhere else and he was waiting in a city called Athens in Greece and while he was waiting there and he saw the idolatry of the city it really troubled him and so he, he went to this place where all of the philosophers usually meet in the square and they just come and just talk you know what they know and what they think they know and he just went there and he started, long and short of it, his time came to speak. And one of the things he said, you can look at the uh, encounter with, between Paul and the philosophers, the Greek philosophers in Athens, in Acts chapter 17, verse 16 down. Um, but in verse 26, he says that God hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, so where you're living today is because God placed you there. And I've determined the times before appointed 
and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Every one of us. God is not far from every one of us. All right, so, so that's the scripture that, that Paul shared with them, among other things. But and at, the, at the end of this time of sharing, some people believed. Some people believed. You know, so it, it's time for us to stop griping and complaining about our life circumstances because they are orchestrated for you to look beyond yourself, to look beyond the pain. You know, it's, it's not just, yes, that, that, that unction that you have on the inside to let you know. God placed it there that, you know, that's not the way my life is supposed to be meaningless and just going around and around in circles and just being um, whatever. You know, there's meaning and purpose, eternal meaning and purpose to my life that God has ordained and I must come into that purpose. In fact, if you are watching or reading this transcript, you are reading this transcript that was announced or you are watching, um, it is God who has put that feeling or that seek in you that gentle prodding by the, by the Holy Spirit because without Him you will never seek after God. In fact, we think that we can just go to God when we are ready. The scripture says, no man can come to God unless he's drawn by the Holy Spirit. So don't take it for granted though because this, if you feel this pull, is yeah. a while, mm. right? He may be found moment. Mm. This seek it, the Lord while he may be found which is another scripture. Let, let's read that scripture before I, I give an account. The scripture says in Isaiah 55, 6, verse, verse 6 and 7. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Mm -hmm. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. So he says while he is near there's a time when the lord makes him makes himself available and we don't plan that he knows the best time to to, to make himself available to you so you can respond to him that's why he makes himself available he says call upon him during that time when he when he's the songwriter says pass me not to a gentle savior hear my humble cry so while the lord makes himself when he comes near that's the time that you have to respond to him. And you don't know that you'll have another time. That's why I said don't take it for granted. Today is a while he may be found moment for someone who is watching. That while he may be found moment is not promised for tomorrow. And I, I, I went on to give an, an example of years ago as a teenager. I was at um, with thousands of persons at, the, at a convention at the National Arena. My church then, the Church of God of Prophecy, used to have these massive conventions. And so I was walking outside and it was the last day and if you know, you couldn't find any seat inside the, 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 the National Arena, it was packed to capacity. And guess what? I was walking outside with a group of friends and all of a sudden I felt very alone. I felt alone and I could hear God calling. You know that song that says, you're calling my name to come into your will? I heard him calling me. I was a teenager with many friends around me, but I heard God calling me. That was my wily baby phone moment. Mm -hmm. And guess what? My heart said yes. My heart said yes, and um, baptism, baptism doesn't save us. It's just the answer for good conscience towards God. But I heard him calling me, and, and guess what? My guardian was there, and I just went straight to them, left my friends, went straight to them, and I said, guess what? I, I was just weeping. I said, I need to get baptized right now, because simultaneously, God had it that the baptism was right in that stadium pool, and I got my change of clothes, and I remember I was the 105th person in that water. Mm -hmm. It was a decision, not necessarily, because we know some people persons get in this religious zone. Baptism doesn't wash away your sins. Mm -hmm. It's the answer for good conscience towards God. It's an outward expression of an inward reality. Mm -hmm. God had called me, I had said yes, and when I, when I said yes, I heard the singing coming from across the pool. And it's just like a clockwork moment. I just went, got my clothes, told my guardian I'm getting baptized, mm -hmm. hop over there, and I was just weeping, and guess what? 
They were singing goodbye world, me not stay no longer with you. I've made up my mind. So that was a defining moment in my life. God had put his seek in, in me. He had set the boundaries of my habitation. He knew at that time as a teenager, I would be at that convention. He knew that the baptism would be going on. He knew that the word would have been picking my heart all week. And so he put his seek. He set up the situation for me to you feel see. after yes. him. Yes, yes. Yeah. Right, to feel after him. If haply, if haply, we might find him, though he be not far from any of us. So, if you feel that unction of the Lord calling you today, it's time for you to respond. That's, that's, he makes, he's making himself available. He's coming near to you. And he's saying, respond to me. I want to, I want to, to, to walk with you through the rest of your life. I want you to show you what I've designed for your life. The purpose that I've purpose for your life. I want to bring you into that satisfaction that only I can give. That eternal um, dimension. Mm -hmm. The man was made to fellowship with God, mm -hmm. his creator. And so that's what God is calling you to today. And, and as we say yes, we, we, we wrap up this first segment, I want us to zoom in again on this scripture. John 6 verse 44. This is a scripture. I urge you, if you are near the, 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 the Bible now, take it out and read it. No man can come to me, and who was speaking? Jesus. Jesus. Except the Father which hath sent me, draw him. Mm -hmm. In other words, you can't come to God when you decide. That's right. He is the one that puts it in you to feel after him. And I know somebody may be watching and you might be saying, but what about those countries where um, the people don't know about the true and living God? Trust me, God is ultimately in control. He says, all souls are mine. Mm -hmm. And I have set the boundaries of the habitation for them to feel after me. He's not far from He's everyone else. He's not of us. far from any one of us. Amen. So don't worry about those persons. Respond to God now. So that maybe God will send you to go get some of them. Amen. 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 Or to do a program like this that will reach them. Amen. So God bless you. We're taking a break and we're coming back. Welcome back to Word Vibes where we're discussing topical issues and today we're looking at God's seek, that God can put a seek in you. The, the Word is light and the perspective that we're looking at today, as I said, is God putting His seek in us, stirring up His seek in us for us to seek Him. It's a seek that nothing else will satisfy. It's a hunger that nothing else can satisfy but a one-on-one -on -one encounter with him God. For me personally, I my two sisters were getting baptized. Uh, my mother said to me that they're going to get baptized at a certain date during a summer holiday of, um, when I was on summer holiday in high school. And she said, um, you know, I've not really been down to the church to see, you know, where they've been attending because that was my thing. You know, um, church wasn't something that was in my on my agenda. And so. Um, you know, I said, well, I'm a big, big you know, the eldest child, I'm a big brother, so let's go see if my two sisters are okay. So I went down there, and um, interesting, two bulbs hanging from a, 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 an electric cord, two or three bulbs, and um, not the best readers in the church. Um, but, you know, they were not, I felt comfortable. I, I you know, just, just walked down the road in my slippers and my sleeveless shirt and stuff. And nobody had any problem with me. I was, you know, they were community people that I, you know, down-to-earth people. And then, so I started hearing what they were saying. And they seemed not to be as disturbed as I was about life and about my future mm -hmm. and about what's going on on earth. And they seemed to actually think that God had a plan that he was working out on earth, which sounded kind of interesting. Because I thought it was just chaos here on earth. And you know, you have to just the strongest survive, you know, that that was what was going on in my head. 
and that it was just full of eel and all of that stuff and anything could happen anytime and so you know you live on the edge you know I was very bright for my age but um, so I, I decided I need to see these people outside of the church setting so I was happy to hear them invite us to help them with the building of the church you know they didn't have any floor it was dirt floor or a concrete on on you know unfinished concrete no tile or anything and no windows yeah but when they got going in that church i mean people be running out of their beds in their nightgowns and in whatever to come to the window to look to see what was happening you know and it was that exciting you know, a lot of young people were getting saved and, and i knew some of these young people like they were real real sinners like you know like real crazy young men especially young men were lifting up their hands and crying that is unheard of these guys you know you know i won't even go into some of the stuff that they were into you know but um the reality is when i went to help them build the church you know because they, they had they said that they would have good lunch you know and i mean i'm home for the summer i'm not doing anything <laughs> you know major and you know if they're gonna cook some food i want to be there so you know i went in and um, i started to watch them outside of the church setting found out that you know there were some of them that were genuine there were some that were play acting of course but there were some that were genuine i couldn't deny that you know what i saw on them in the service they also had on them like that peace you know that strange kind of peace and settledness like you know god was really jesus christ is lord those statements was you know they were kind of like different you know and um so long and short of it i i kept going to the church to see you know to after helping out in the daytime i went to the service because they had a what i found out later is a revival and um you know every night they were having service and so i kept going and after a while i stopped watching them i i started the words started to get into my heart and i found myself going up to the altar to pray because there are times when you could go up to the altar to pray and nobody was pressuring you you weren't being rushed or anything so I would just go up to the altar and just kneel down quietly and pray because I'm from a quiet church setting where no, no, you know, but I couldn't deny that God was moving in the place. And it was a whole new setting for me, but long and short of it again, I got to a place where I knew that God was speaking to me personally and he was calling for a surrender of my life to him. At 15 years old, I didn't plan to serve God until like, you know, 50 odd old, you know, finish the world as we say in Jamaica as young men but God had, put his but God had a plan right yeah, so I said you know what if God is calling me this intense maybe he's seeing something you know that I'm not seeing around the, around the corner right. and I don't want to take that chance with my soul and so I, I surrendered my life to God so God had 15 put years you old. seeking you yes and he had caused you to feel you see, there's a scripture that says he has put eternity in our hearts right and, he, and I, actually i got to a place in that season leading up to the bapt i actually ended up being baptized with my two sisters leading up to the baptism where I, I there was absolutely no doubt that if i said yes to god that he would receive me right. and so i you know I, I i said to god okay god i'm gonna watch one last stage show and then after that i'm gonna <laughs> surrender everything to you i'm not gonna tell you to do that i'm just right. saying what i did right. i knew i had a two-week window to to get it right mm -hmm. and i responded to god and um the rest is history and so um there are there, there are some of you are watching and you're wondering but i haven't felt this secret there they, you you have because in this program is god drawing yeah, you to, out to you right. but let us look at at least two things that block us from from receiving when God calls us, you know, of course, we know we the pleasures of sin, just straight up, yeah. you know, <laughs> pleasures of sin. You're enjoying some pleasures right Which now. Which the scripture that... say is for a season. Uh -huh. So, um, what, what what's, what's the context of that scripture? Whether than enjoy the pleasures of sin. Oh, Moses, yeah. Moses decided he, you know, he could be the next Pharaoh, and he decided that. Okay. I'm going to give up all of that to suffer with the people of God to enjoy okay. so that he could experience the riches of Christ there is you know so there is the riches of Christ compared to the riches of this world mm -hmm. and there is the, the joys of heaven compared to the pleasures of sin mm -hmm. and uh, when you really look at it seriously there is no really no comparison there is there's no competition between those two things so ah. Yeah. So 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 we have that. We also have about the pleasures of sin. We also have the fact that an offense 
or unforgiveness can stop the flow of, of God's love to your heart and it's so powerful there are some of you who are watching now yeah, who God has God. been calling you but you have been blaming him and blaming circumstances and blaming people and and so that unforgiveness has blocked the flow of God's love you want to, to take you. revenge and you, you want, want to, to kill revenge. somebody yeah. it's, but guess what give it to God because he is looking remember we started off by looking at your timeline um, that dash in your life, the dash between, you know, that little dash, 1962 90 to 1992, that little dash there, he has determined the, the boundaries of your inhabitation and the time. And there's another scripture that's been zooming up in my spirit now from the book of E. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. <laughs> that yeah. God says, I'm giving you time and chance. Time and Solomon says time and chance has been given to every man. So you have time and you have chance. Now let me put another spin on this seeking because seek the, his seek. Yeah. Because not only is God calling those who are not saved to seek him, but those who are in him, we have to live a life where we realize that the Holy Spirit comes to us every day to seek the face of God. We already have him, but he wants us to seek him every day for instructions, yes. for directions for her life, for our lives. He wants us to seek his face mm. daily. And, and, and that, that, not even daily, momentarily. Just live in a place where you have a seeking heart. And even as it relates to your, your, your work, you know, your area of work, how do you, what should you be doing with your life? What we call in Christian circles vocation. Mm -hmm. It's not just a career, it's not just a job. God don't want just running after money or after a job or, or trying to, you know, scratching and scraping to try and care for ourselves. No, we should seek his will and say, Father, what is your will for my life? We should, we should follow his leading. And sometimes even before you ask, God will tell you. Before you call. I, will, I want you to do this with you. I I want, I'm taking you down this track. You know, some of you have been resisting God. Some of you, God, been calling you to go back to study. You've been saying, no, the money, making the money right now, sweet. You know, um, or some of you are in different professions where, where you just don't want to step out. Because if you step out, it might involve some suffering. You might think you're crazy. Apart you know? from that too, God, God, for all of us, God wants, it to seek us, wants us to seek Him because His will for your life involves the ministry of reconciliation. All of us have been given a ministry to reconcile people unto God. Mm -hmm. And it is until we begin to seek His face that we see how that plays out. Mm -hmm. But I, if you're watching today and, and you're saying about seek, yes, yes, God has put His seek, His feel after. Can you imagine His feel? You're not just left in the dark. The Holy Spirit is near to is, you. Is near to you. Mm -hmm. Remember what we said, though He be not far from you. Mm -hmm. He's just a prayer away. He's just a thank you, Jesus away. He's just a yes, Lord away. He is right now with you and He's saying, Guess what? I have open arms. And until the last breath comes out of your body, He will continually be reaching out with our outstretched arms. And His hand is not too short. Mm -hmm. so and His ears is not heavy you but feel. your sins and iniquity have separated you but even inside of that separation when he comes he says and though your sins be as scarlet yes. they shall be as wool though they be red as crimson they shall be as white as snow yeah. so the lord is reaching out to you today though he's reaching out to you right now to right now somebody, he's reaching out to you right now and now is the time for you to respond to him. Yes. This time that he has given you, allowed you to be on this program watching, it's not by chance. Mm -hmm. It's time for you to respond to God. It's time for you to say, God, I'm going to give up this thing that you're telling me to give up that's between me and you. Just let me just pause it. God yes. never takes anything from you that you need to fulfill your purpose. Mm -hmm. if, he, if he comes after you and gives you a seeking heart, and in the middle of the seeking he says, give that up, it's because he knows that you don't need that to fulfill your purpose wow. and it might be something that you need but he will give you back at the appropriate time when you need it in his way because he is he is lord mm -hmm. and he he loves you body and soul mm -hmm. you know amen so the lord wants your soul saved today yes, lord. he wants you to agree with him right now wherever yes, you are don't try some of you are in situations where your life is is in jeopardy mm -hmm. but if you give your life to god god will work it out he will work it out. He may not deliver you from death. The tooth is on the cross. 
that were being crucified with Jesus, they were not delivered from physical death. But one of them was delivered into paradise with Jesus that very same day. And so I want you to give your life to Jesus. Let him work out the details. He's not calling you to work it out. You're not powerful enough to work it out. God knows how to work it out. And so, Father, we release your, your grace in, through this program to this life. And we thank you, Lord, that you are reminding the soul that you are near. You're making yourself near to this soul right now. Help, Lord, as they reach out, as we agree together with this soul, these, the soul that is watching, Lord. I thank you that as they call on that name of Jesus, as they say, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, deliver me. As they say, Jesus, help me. Just, just that, just Jesus. You don't, you, don't, you don't know what else to say, but everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. We speak deliverance to you right now. Mm -hmm. And we say, let that response of seeking in your heart be honorable and, and be true to God. Everyone that seeks, finds. Amen. So find him right now as he has come to find you in your situation. In Jesus' name, God bless. And, and as we want you to, to, to stay connected. We want you to email us at thewordislife at gmail.com. And for the transcript of today's lesson, you can visit our Facebook page, Word Vibes, Bread for the Nations, as we dealt with freedom today. And we just want to say, seek the Lord while you may be found. And today is a while you may be found moment. So stay free. <laughs> Amen. Amen. This has been Word Vibes. Amen. <laughs>